While Codemasters posted a track time that was by many fans' estimation too leisurely with their follow-up to 2008's Grid, just a year later they have given us Grid Autosport. With a design document that appears to be a collection of highlights from an angry Grid 2 forum rant, Codemasters seems poised to win back some of the fans that the diversive Grid 2 sent searching elsewhere for their virtual track day thrills. Autosport moves its focus toward replicating the details and intricacies of multiple racing disciplines by offering a refined car handling model and the inclusion of touring car and endurance racing. Does the quick turnaround time between Grid 2 and Autosport reveal some ugly blemishes, or is this the Grid game that should have been released last year? There are racing games for car lovers, and there are racing games made for people that obsess with the details of sending a car around a track as quickly as possible. Autosport caters to the latter. Those who enjoy buying, tuning, and personalizing their dream cars should leave this game on the shelf. Grid Autosport offers very little theater, ditching the fictitious racing series and fake sports center news clips in favor of no bullshit rubber on tarmac racing. Players will find that they are free to move between different touring car races, endurance races, open wheel racing, tuner events, and street races. Players level up in each race type independently, and in doing so they unlock new events and sponsors, as well as Grid Race Series events. The freedom ends there, however. Once an event is selected, players are given the choice between two race teams who have pre-selected cars and unappealing liveries. While certainly a realistic touch, it takes the joy out of earning your favorite rides and making them your own. Additionally, each sponsor has different objectives and tuning affinities. The higher their affinity for tuning, the more settings players will have to tweak their machines, so choosing a sponsor is like choosing the difficulty of a race series, and additional experience can be earned by succeeding with an underdog team. The realism continues once players are secured via a 5-point harness behind the wheel. If you're expecting to be at the front of the pack, then participating in qualifying events is necessary. Forgoing qualifying laps means fighting to the front of a dense 12-16 to player field and contending with some seriously aggressive AI. An extensive damage model and strict penalties for cutting corners means that moving up a position or two is a bitter fight. It feels like an accomplishment to move through the pack, but since most races consist of two or three laps, aggressive racing is essential, and oftentimes you'll find yourself crossing the finish line with the car that has wrecked steering and is not pushing as much horsepower as when the race started. Race ending collisions can occur, and like Grid 2, the damage model sets a genre standard. Unfortunately, qualifying means completing every race twice, and qualifying isn't a possibility for certain race series. For those who don't have an obsession with cleaving off a tenth of a second on your lap time, it's tedious. Also complicating matters is the fact that most race events have you teamed up with an AI driver who helps determine your placement in the team standings at the end of a season. Perhaps I made a habit of selecting the wrong sponsor, but my teammates all seem to be tailpipe fetishists who are content to follow the entire field. While it's possible to order commands for your teammate to drive more aggressively or hold their position, it seems to have little effect other than hearing your partner spin out if you forget to back them off the most aggressive behavior setting. Fortunately, the opponent AI also makes mistakes but all too often the work you put into capturing a podium finish is undermined by your teammate, ultimately costing you valuable experience at the end of the season. Gaining experience is essential to progressing through the career, so it doesn't take long before the game feels like a grind. Variety is a hallmark of the Grid series, and Autosport offers tour car racing, endurance racing, open wheel racing, street car racing, and tuner racing. Endurance races take place over a fixed time, and the driver that travels the furthest in the allotted time wins. It's possibly the most challenging race type, since careful and consistent driving is required to stay to the front of the pack, and to protect the soft rubber that keeps your machine on the road. Open wheel racers are incredibly fragile, and the threshold between cornering at max speed and being murdered in a nasty crash is thinner than a human hair. Open wheel racing in Autosport is not as complex as Codemasters' own F1 series, since adaptive aerodynamics and the curse system have been omitted, but nevertheless offers a commendable and accessible experience. Tuner racers are largely comprised of time attacks and drift events. Street races tend to be the most enjoyable events, simply because they excise the game's long list of real-world Grand Prix tracks in favor of more detailed city-based tracks. Finally, touring car events adhere to the adage of rubbing is racing, by placing you behind the wheel of road cars tuned to unrecognizable specifications while you bump and bash your way through corners, defending your position against a tightly knit field of racers. Sadly, toge events are absent from Autosport, and the live route system, possibly one of the most intriguing features in a racing game in years, is also absent. Additionally, players' varying tastes means that some events will become a tedious test of patience for some, and leveling across all event types is essential to unlock grid events. Once again, the vehicle selection is slim, but covers a tremendous variety of machines, including the platypus of the automotive world, the Aussie Ute. Online is much the same in Autosport as it was in Grid 2, with both weekly challenge events and direct competition with 11 other drivers. 
Cars have to be earned one by one, and leveling up each of the racing disciplines contributes to your overall level and unlocks more slots in your garage and sponsors. Each car must be leveled through use, unlocking tuning options and upgrades. This proves highly problematic, however, since it takes an absurd amount of time to unlock enough tuning options for the feature to be usable. Tuning is a delicate art, the kind of thing that you would do with a scalpel, and Autosport's initial instinct is to provide you with a jackhammer. Tuning options are controlled via sliders, and the greater your affinity for tuning, the more settings available along the slider. Also, the way vehicle availability is divided between race types and classes with each race type means that it's hard to dedicate yourself to using a single vehicle in order to upgrade it. All of this comes together to make online play a grind of its own. Autosport does provide an excellent assortment of tracks across its single player and online suites. Many of the tracks in Grid 2 can be found here as well as a large selection of new Grand Prix tracks, many of which are not found in other mainstream racing games. The most exciting inclusion is the brand new Circuit of the Americas, with its tight hairpins, long straights, and winding sections. While Codemasters has included a number of details that liven up real-life Grand Prix tracks, racing through some of the game's cityscapes is far more captivating and lively. The steam, confetti, and gorgeous architecture featured in these tracks creates quite a spectacle. It's a shame that most are carried over from Grid 2, and the brilliant Californian coast, Côte d'Azur, and Hong Kong tracks were left on the cutting room floor. Presentation-wise, Autosport maintains the same high quality as Grid 2, but by popular demand a cockpit view has been added. The cockpit view is still likely to be a point of contention, however, since Codemasters took a massive shortcut by adding a depth of field effect that alleviated them from needing to animate gauges and dials of each vehicle as well as providing high-resolution texture work. It does generally grant players a more immersive driving experience, but cutting such a huge corner is going to ruffle some feathers. Autosport makes some strides toward addressing the issues that many Toka and Grid fans had with Grid 2, but features enough quirks and questionable design choices of its own to remain frustrating. It's a game that caters to serious race fans and shrugs off features that lend themselves toward giving players a sense of progression. You are simply a driver tied to a team that you are in no way invested in, who is in turn leashed to a corporate sponsor. It's a bit of realism that most gamers could do without. Autosport is a challenging racing game with perfect handling and tenacious AI, but the dense racing fields and low lap counts combined with a rigorous damage model can irritate. Extensive plans for DLC also raise eyebrows, and will likely cause would-be wheelmen to steer around this entry. Autosport is a jack of all trades and a master of none, but with some more wrenching and refinement, it could one day be the master of all.